Hi there, Dr. Capacitor here with another episode, and today we're going to talk Mark, did about. Did you receive that email that was sent? Fred, come on. What's the big idea? Well, I've got these tech topic papers for you to look at, and your door was wide open. Not so you could just waltz right in, Fred. You know, I got the camera going all, and this was going to be my best take yet. Well, there's painters coming in to paint the office. That's what the email is about. That's today? All day? You, you're killing me, Fred. Those painters are just hindering our creative genius. Well, can you just take this to the conference room? Okay, off to the conference room we go. Okay, let's try this again. We're getting back to basics today, kids. Consider this capacitor as 101. Now, I'm going to give you some groovy terms and definitions that'll make you sound like the coolest cat at parties. Aluminum electrolytic capacitors. What the heck are they? Hot dog! I couldn't have drawn that any better myself. Two aluminum electrolytic electrodes separated by a layer of paper saturated with the liquid electrolyte. Hence the name aluminum electrolytic. The dielectric or insulating material is aluminum oxide, which is only grown on the oxide foil or positive foil. What's an anode, you ask? Well, it's the positive electrode or foil or lead of an aluminum electrolytic capacitor. It's made out of highly pured aluminum foil, which is electrochemically etched, and the aluminum oxide layer is grown onto its surface. Don't you hate it when people are having a conversation about capacitance at work and you don't know how to contribute? Simply put, capacitance is the measure of stored energy in a capacitor. We express it in farads, microfarads, nanofarads, and picofarads. So who's king of the water cooler now? Cathode, the close relative of the anode. More specifically, it's the negative electrode of an electrolytic capacitor. Lower purity aluminum foil, extremely thin oxide layer. Current, modern, cutting edge, happening. Also, the amount of charge moving past a given point over time. Ow! Dielectrics. If you caught my first episode, you're hip to the groove. If not, it's an insulating material placed between the metal plates or electrodes of an electrolytic capacitor. Now don't miss another episode. Hmm. Dissipation factor. Heard of it? How about tan delta? Well, they're the same thing. They're the measure of the losses within a capacitor. How do you measure dissipation factor? Well, it's simply the ratio of the ESR to the reactance of the capacitor. In other words, the higher the dissipation factor, the more the capacitor will heat up. Electrolyte. Now forget about the expensive bottled water you get at the store for a second. Electrolytes are like the dielectrics repairmen. They conduct current and are placed between the electrodes to put the dielectric back in tip-top shape. Here at NicheCon, we only use ethylene glycol and gamma butyl lactone. ESR stands for Equivalent Series Resistance. It's all the capacitor's internal resistances added together, and it's measured in ohms. Impedance. It's the vector sum of a capacitor's resistive and reactive components, also expressed in ohms or milliohms. At high frequencies, impedance and ESR are very close to each other. Leakage current. Exactly what it sounds like. Something bad. Occasionally, capacitor's oxide layer cracks or is defective. When DC voltage is applied, the direct current says, peace out, and goes its own way. Not cool. The more defects there are, the higher the leakage current. Ripple current, or how much alternating and pulsating current can be applied to my capacitor without causing it to fail. And finally, Surge voltage, the highest voltage a capacitor can tolerate over its rated voltage for a short amount of time 
without damaging it. Hey kids, thanks for joining me today. And next time we're gonna talk about- Seriously, Mark, are you still back here filming this video? I mean, we got a meeting, Dr. Nichicon. Remember the name, Dr. Capacitor. Yeah.